Greetings Commanders, this is Cree Cree here and I'm an elite dangerous content creator. One of the things that I do is that I do create community based events on my Twitch channel so if you want to go check that out it's at twitch.tv forward slash Cree Cree. The link for that will be in the description below. Now today's video is a bounty hunting unengineered vulture. Now this is a really cheap build. It is only a little bit over 21 million credits. That's pretty cheap considering that this ship is really good for bounty hunting. So now let's get into the build. Now here is the hard points. As you can see one of the great things about this ship is that you have two large hard points. Now for this I would suggest putting in a 3D fixed pulse laser, a 3C gimbaled multi cannon. Now the reason why I've gone with this is because the pulse laser is really good for when your opponent has released chaff launcher, so that means that your gimbaled weapons like the multi cannon would scramble. But because the pulse laser is fixed, you just need to aim straight at it and fire away and it will take down the shields. With the multi cannon, the multi cannon is best against the ship's hull. So that's why it's best to have something that is good for shields and the other being good for the hull. Now moving on to the utility mounts. First is the kill warrant scanner. Now obviously you'll want this because this is a bounty hunting ship. The rating that I've gone with C is mostly because of the power that is used for an A because normally yes that would give you more distance that you can scan from but C is a good mid ground you'll be able to get the scan off pretty quickly. Next is that I've put in an A rated shield booster. This is as what it sounds like it is to help boost your shields in your ship. Next is that I've put in two chaff launchers. Uh, this is really good for those gimbaled weapons on your opponent's ship. So if they are gimbaled, then once you release the chaff, then that means that their weapons will scramble and they'll have a hard time trying to get a shot on you. Next is the core internal. Now for the armor, I've gone with a 1A military grade composite. This is just so that, uh, yes, you are heavier. So that means that your jump range will be smaller but your hull will be boosted at 250%. And next is the power plant. We need to have the highest rated and highest class that this is allowed, which is a 4A. Now you'll be able to see down below that when everything is deployed, it won't be able to handle it, but I'll get into the power priority just after the build. So that way you're able to combat the power when everything is deployed. Now for thrusters, I've gone with 5A. This is because this ship is a small ship and it's really maneuverable. So you want to have as much power as you can to your thrusters so that you're able to spin around and get away from opponents if you need to. And naturally we have the frame shift drive as a 4A. And as per usual, this is just so that we can have the largest jump that we can possibly have with this small ship, which at this build is a jump range of 14 light years. So I would suggest taking this ship to your favorite spot to do bounty hunting in. I would suggest LHS317 because they have high, low, medium and hazardous resource extraction sites really close to the main station in the system. Next is the life support. I've gone with a 3D because the D rated modules are the lightest and I wanted to try and help with that jump range as much as I could. So I've gone with the D. Next is the power distributor. So I've put that as a 5A. This is so that I can get the fastest recharge that I possibly can for the weapons, engines and systems as you need them whilst you're in a bounty fight. And lastly, I've gone with a 4A sensors. So the reason why I've gone with A for this is because you are using this for bounty hunting. You want to be able to have as much range as you possibly can with this being a maximum of eight kilometers unengineered. So that way you're able to find your enemies and your wanted ships as fast as you can, as opposed to getting so close to other ships like you normally would need to. 
Next is the optional eternal. Now starting off with the shield generator, this is a 5C bioweave shield generator. This is because this ship is a small ship and having a bioweaves on there means that even though the shields can be taken down quickly, it is actually far more faster to recharge than any other shield generator available. Next we're going to go through the other modules, which most of which are D-rated hull reinforcement packages. So this 5 is a hull reinforcement, this 4 is a hull reinforcement, plus 2 hull reinforcement, these 3 class 1s are hull reinforcement, and of course you need at least one module reinforcement to protect the modules of your ship. You can swap out one of the class 1 hull reinforcement packages with a module reinforcement package. That is a uh, personal preference, it really might make that much difference in terms of power and such because it doesn't actually take any power at all. Now as I discussed earlier I will go through the power priority so just so you can manage the power when all your modules are deployed. Now as you can see the output is always going to be 100% but when you have everything that uses power is over 100% that means that some modules are going to shut down. Now this is where the power priority comes into play. Now I'm just going to list through all these modules and tell you what priority they are and then that way once you uh, deploy your weapons and such the modules that you're not likely going to be using will automatically shut down and once you retract your hard points and such those modules will turn back on. So with the thrusters they are at priority one simply because you'll be using them the most. Bioweave shield generator I have put that at two. Same with the shield booster. Sensors, of course, you'll be using them all the time, so they are at priority one. Your weapons, so the multi-cannon and pulse laser are at priority three. Same with the kill warrant scanner, as well as the power distributor. Now, this is because these modules are used uh, only in specific circumstances, so obviously when you're fighting. So they are high, but they're not always being used. So we don't need them to be a high priority. Cargo hatch is at five. So this is one of the modules that will shut down once everything has been deployed. Life support is one, of course, because we need life support. The frame shift drive is at priority four. Now this is because that when you're in a fight, this is one of the modules that will be shutting down. You're obviously not gonna need the frame shift drive while you're fighting, so it will shut down. And when you retract your weapons, as I said, it will turn back on just in case you do need to jump out into super crews to escape just in case you are fighting a losing battle. The chaff launchers are at priority two. This is so that uh, the reason why the chaff launchers are at a higher priority than the weapons is because in case you need to make a run for it, as I had mentioned, then you might need to launch some chaff to get away whilst you boost up your FSD. I'm just going to quickly go through the fire groups. Now for the pulse laser and the kill warrant scanner, I've put them both on my primary fire in the one fire group. This is just so that after your ship has done the automatic scan of a ship and it comes up as being wanted, then you'll be able to use your pulse laser and your kill warrant scanner at the same time. So you're getting the information that you need to see if they do have a warrant out and you're also taking down their shields at the same time. And obviously I've got the multi-cannon as the secondary fire. The next group I've just got the data link scanner and the, and the composition scanner at uh, primary and secondary. And then I have the discovery scanner and, and the chaff launchers in their own respective fire groups. If you find another beginner build that is unengineered, then do let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Here's a video that YouTube thinks that you'll like. I'll see you over there commanders. Fly safe.